Yo, still bills, what's the deal, man? Yo, y'all know how the story go. I just dropped my daughter off at daycare. I'm heading to the plantation to start this day off, man. Hopefully it's a shorter day. I'm really hoping so, man. I'm ready to be home. And I'm starving, man. But peep game, man, we gotta talk about this. We gotta talk about these ticket prices for Earl Spence and your Danish school guys, man, allegedly being $45. <laughs> It was, it was World War Three, or not even World War Three. It was, you know, the, it was the laughing stock when Canelo was letting his tickets go for about, for around about that price when he fought. I want to say Billy Joe Saunders. It was, it was, it was, it was funny. It was comical because everybody was fresh off of the Fury and Wilder, um, you know, that trilogy and how much that was going for people. But people don't take into consideration that fight. The controversy is what sold that fight. So it was a high demand to see if what Wilder was saying was really true. You know, did this dude put horseshoes in his gloves? Was, you know, did was 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 Mark Breland in on the plot to kill him? We had, you know, Wilder Fury had to prove all I mean both had to prove all that, man. All of the accusations that was flying out of the world were that brung that drew attention. To that fight, not even just that fight, just the whole scenario in itself, man, that, you know, opened up the floodgates for an influx of new boxing fans to come into these spaces and decide that they want to be a part of this. You know, so it was all eyes on that fight. So that fight was going to sell. It was going to sell. It's heavyweight boxing and, you know, it's on the tip of everybody's tongues. They're talking about it on ESPN. You dig, you have, you know, we, they barely talk about boxing on ESPN as it is. And for this one to be getting media covers like it did, all right, cool, yeah, yeah, most definitely. We're going to tune in and see what's going on. We're going to do a little bit of research, extensive research on the fight and see if everything pans out. And whatever sounds good, that's just the narrative that we're going to ride with. And that's what sold that fight. That's what sold that fight. I've seen a lot of people talk about how, yeah, man, I had to pay so and so hundred dollars for the while, you know, to get into, you know, to get a seat at that fight. It is what it is. Even though before you, you know, them, them, them tickets never went for that much before that fight in the first or the second fight. It, it just, it just didn't, man. It, it didn't. No way it did. No way. Because there was nothing surrounding the fight. There was nothing to, it was nothing to draw attention to that fight out, you know, outside of them being heavyweights. You know, like, all right, cool, whatever. It's another regular title bout. Now you have controversy being, you know, interjected into the situation. So, yeah, that fight is going to do a lot better on, at the live end than most other fights. You dig, dude lost Black History Month, lost to this big Brody white man. You know, you're supposed to be the black man pushing black consciousness and black empowerment, which is a beautiful thing. So you have, uh, you know, a chain of people, our people get behind you and pushing and pulling for you. So you could do that. You could get away with selling, you know, seats for, you know, triple digits. There's no controversy surrounding Canelo fights. You know what I'm saying? Even with the Golovkin fight, I don't even know what those tickets went for. But the other, the second Golovkin fight, the rematch, because that people feel that the first fight was so controversial. I don't know what the prices were on the, the seats for the second fight, man. But for his, the fights that he's been having in the now. He's been selling, you know, they've been selling the tickets for cheap. And I don't see anything wrong with that, man. I don't I don't see where I don't I don't see how it's is 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 it's plausible to have bragging, you know, for you know, for you to brag on certain fighters hitting a certain, you know, a certain number that would make it pretty much unaccept the fight unaccessible to the, you know, the regular blue collar working class man and woman to go and watch the fight. I think that's very stupid, personally. I think it's stupid as shit. I, if I was a professional boxer, I wouldn't want, if I got all these other endorsements and, you know, Canelo is, you know, getting allegedly getting 160 mil for three fights with the zone, why would I sell tickets for two and three hundred dollars? You dig what I'm saying? I wouldn't necessarily want to do that. I don't want to Nah, I'm getting money anyway, man. I want every the goal and the objective is for everybody to see me fight. I want everybody to see me perform and compete. 
that's the overall objective. And when someone is being vilified for that, for not putting ticket prices at a, you know, an astronomical number, I think that shit is goofy. And they're being, la you know, he's being laughed at and, you know what I'm saying, they clap down. All right, cool. So now that we have Spence and Ugas in the same situation, the same cats who was pushing that shit aren't keeping that same energy. The energy is not reciprocated. And that's that's why that's why it pays to be humble. That's why it pays to be humble. So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to face situations like this. You don't have to, <laughs> you, you know, you, you ain't got to worry about being chastised because your ticket prices are $45 instead of $100 and $150 and $200 and $250 and $300. You can just sit by, all right, whatever the fuck ever, you know, here, yeah, $45. There's a reason for that. And I'm not even sure. I don't even think the stadium is full up. And the fight is next week. Those tickets are not sold out. Which also goes to another narrative that they was just trying to push a year or two ago that Earl Spence is the new face of boxing because he outsold Canelo Alvarez in one fight when that fight did not have the proper promotion that, that you know, to go behind it because it was so, it was so short notice it was a, probably a month and change before Canelo got in the ring because he was fresh out of a legal uh, you know a legal battle in the courtroom you know it's just wild what you know just you know, people live in the moment and I, you know and I'm one of those people as well I try to stay objective as I possibly can but it's just human nature to live in the moment like oh shit oh shit that happens, man. Especially when you root for somebody, it happens. You're gonna be that nigga to be like, "Oh yeah, I told you." You know, it is what it is. That's how it goes. That's how the story goes, man. But it, it's just, I just think it's, it, I just think it's funny now how all of the cats who was, you know, lambasting Canelo for not having high ticket prices aren't saying shit about Spence and Ugas ticket prices being low. That's kind of weird, man. That's. Comical, not on, not because of Spence and the guys, but because of the, you know, the sycophants. You know, it, you know, you, you can't turn somebody into something that he's not. Spence does not have the following of a Canelo Alvarez, and that's okay because no active fighter has the following of a Canelo Alvarez. You, you, you feel me? There isn't people that that's that's going to be a hard that, that's going to be a hard thing to do and sell it not just to the point not just him having a loyal following but a loyal following that's willing to pay to see him fight. That's going to be a hard thing to do in the now. They just don't want to let pay per view die, you know, go to the wayside. They don't want to do it. So all right, cool. Who's the you know who's the next superstar caliber boxer that y'all are going to you know present to us? Y'all yet to do it. Outside of Canelo. And y'all just knew for a fact it was Spence. Y'all knew for a fact it was Wilder. And it's, 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 it's not. It's not. Spence could have possibly been that if he fought Bud. But even then, I don't think either one of those cats are high profile enough to the point where it would equate their fan base to the likes of a Canelo Alvarez. It wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. Canelo, Canelo has been putting in pain since he was 15. He's been in the American eye of the public since he was what? In his early 20s. I remember when I, I thought the motherfucker was Irish with that red hair. I went over to the homie house. The homie was like, man, I'm, man, it's this Mexican dude in Mexican. I'm like, Ooh. I'm like, all right, cool. And he pulled up some footage. I'm like, where the Mexican do that? Nigga, that's him right there. I'm like, oh, fuck out of here. I start to see them, you know, as I, oh, yeah, all right, cool. You know, as the time went on, I start to see the mestizo in them. I honestly do. I honestly do. But that red hair threw me. That red hair threw me. Not even on front. Plenty of Irish in Mexico. I went to Takiata Tijuana over here on the south side of South Omaha before, and it was this white dude. And he was, you know, he had, you know, the, 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 the he was Mexican. You know, it was a white Mexican like he had the thick, the thick English accent. I was like, where, where you from? 
Nonetheless, that was the first time I seen him fight. This had to be 2012. So he's been doing his numbers since then. You know, he's been promoted. He's been, he's been in, you know, he's been in big fights. He fought Floyd at 23 years old, man. He's been putting in pain for years, man. So it's going to be hard to usurp that as far as stature is concerned. It's going to be hard to usurp that. So Earl was not about to be that. Earl came on the scene a little bit later than Canelo. Earl is hasn't dabbled in other divisions like Canelo, and he hasn't fought the caliber of opponents that Canelo has fought. And that's cool. Not everybody is supposed to do what they, you know, everybody, you know, everybody has a certain point in their life where they, you know, all right, cool. I had to wait till I was 30 to get my first title shot. I had to wait till I was 30 to get my first, you know, 31 to get my first title defense. And now I can really forge my legacy. That's cool. But what I'm saying is Canelo did that at an early age. So it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to plateau that. So y'all got to stop with this narrative that you, you, this, 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 this mindset that he's being, you know, surpassed by some cats who are not on his level. And I got to stop this goofy shit that, you know, he's, He's, you know, he's not worth what he's worth because he's selling tickets for cheap. He's selling tickets on the cheap. You know, I just, I, I just, I don't get what's up with niggas, man. The most, the most economically unstable people in the country are bragging on ticket prices. You know what I'm saying? We ought to be happy that. We ought to be happy that these fighters allow. Oh, you know, yeah, man, 40 years, sell them hoes for $45, sell them for $50. We ought to be happy that, uh, that and some shit like that. Our priorities is fucked up as a people. You don't brag. You, like, how you tee off on somebody for letting tickets go for $50 and $45? And laugh at it. It's satire. Oh, shit, man, that nigga, he ain't this, he ain't that. Just to turn around and the dude that you are pushing for and primarily pushing for is doing the same thing because his fight isn't pulling in the revenue and the the, the um the awareness and the, the the attention that you thought it was gonna pull in because you think Earl Spence is something that he's not, which is a high profile fighter. So me personally, I can't wait till the fight next week. I never hated the fight. I just thought it was corny how he went about doing the fight. I'm going to do a breakdown sometime next week of the fight. Um, but, uh, I mean, that is alarming that it's in his hometown and the fight has yet to, you know, I, I don't think it's sold out. I haven't heard anything about it being sold out. And the fact that they're letting tickets go for cheaper is, is kind of like, it's a wild fest. Like, wow. Wow. Even, you know, why, even with, to go back to Wilder and Fury in their trilogy, like that fight didn't sell out immediately. The tickets started selling when they went on sale. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the one thing about the American fan base that we really need to humble ourselves on, man. Like, we're not as thorough as a lot of the UK fans. There's no reason why I fight like Conor Ben and, and Kell Brook can sell out as soon as the tickets go on sale. But we're having trouble selling Ugas and Spence. There's no reason for that. There's no reason for that. There's no reason why Dillian White and Tyson Fury's fight. Uh, is that shit sold out? I think that shit is sold out already. That shit sells out, but but Wilder and uh, Wilder and Fury, Wilder and Fury got to fucking you know allegedly give out tickets for all that extra shit, man. Like we as American, as the consumers in America, we need to get we need to step our shit up as fans. We need to do that if you go to these fights. And really humble yourselves and shut the fuck up when it comes to oh shit, fuck going on over here. Shit, we just pulled into work. But we need to humble out on that shit and stop acting goofy when it comes to you know certain shit. Like we better than everybody, bro. We we not. We not. Our fan bases get funny style and just you know our fighters earn. I, I just they're just not as you know appealing as other. Our fighters, as Americans, our fighters aren't appealing to, you know, like, with the, the our fighters shit don't mean what they mean to the Brits. 
what British fighters mean to the Brits and vice versa, man. So that's all I got to say about it, man. Deuces.